All right, Foot Clan, another great show for you today. We're talking about some more early running back rankings, some names with a lot of question marks around them. How reliable are they going to be on your team? Where do we have them slotted in this early in the offseason ahead of the NFL draft? Don't miss a minute. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, ho, ho. Take it easy. He's agitated. The bear? Yes. Yes, indeed. Welcome into the show Thursday, April 14th. The Fantasy Footballers minus one. That's right. Jay Grizz in the house today. Mike Wright is here. I'm Andy Holloway, but we have a cardboard bear extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. In the place of Big Shimmy, Jay Sizzle himself. (laughs) Jay Sizzle? I'm just trying it on. (laughs) Uh Jason's not with us today, unfortunately. We have a second RB ranking show. Why isn't he with us today, Mike? He he got it. He finally got it. He did. Got the Rona. Yep. It's yeah. Unexpected. Things have been nice and calm. Nice and chill, and then suddenly it reared its ugly it's like the Spanish, virus head. The Spanish Inquisition. No one expects it. But this is uh this is the first uh the first one of us to go down. Not surprised it was the weaker one. I I didn't want to say it out loud. I was thinking it real hard. Now uh we we may be joking around, but that's only because he is feeling quite well indeed. Mm-hmm. Um sore throat, a little bit tired, and already extremely irritated to be stuck in a room at home and not here talking to you folks. He would have been on the show today from home, but he said um, it hurts to talk. It hurts to talk. That is the <laughs> the common cry of the of Omicron. Yep. It, that is the cry of Omicron. It goes, ah! And that's what he's doing. So, um, But we're here. We're here, and we miss you, Jay. Get, get better soon. Mm-hmm. Should be back with us next week. And uh, we've got a lot of running backs to talk about. Al Borland in the building, the Borgogan as well. We've got a skeleton crew. Yeah. Uh, because it's just – The uh, Giamatti yeah. fella isn't here today either. That's right. Not sick. Nope. Fellow ball boy. Is, Is that, that what – are we mm, going with? I Did don't we, know. You tell me. What were the – There were too many, too many suggestions that weren't good. <laughs> and uh, – <laughs> No, we we I mean people want they a lot of people making a really really abundant effort to tie in the Foot Clan with some a sort of effort. Yeah, with some sort of will. foot or toe relate like everything from toe jam, toenails, bro nails, feet things, I mean the shoes, the socks, I mean they're laying it on thick on that front. And the ball boys, I mean the jam squad, the ball boys, those came up on the show. The Bunions, people bring that one up again with the feet because of uh, the Borgogan, Brooksy, and uh, Borland. Borland. Yeah. And then the, there's a lot of them out there, and I don't think we've settled just yet. We have not. Uh, we are still running through. The Water Boys. I, I don't mind that. The Water Boys is okay. Because they help out. I also like producers of our podcast show. Producers of our podcast show. So what would the acronym be? Poops. The poops. The poops. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Definitely on brand. We're still working. We're still we're still looking. Uh, and then it, you know the deucers. I'm not sure. Like a shorthand for producers. The deucers. <laughs> what do you think of that? I like it. Uh, <laughs> uh the the fab Number three. Two. The fab three, but that's like fab. No, no. Yeah. like the fab five, but no. Yeah, but that has alliteration. Right. This doesn't. The no. fab three does not. We need two more. Um, we'll so, get there. Well, figured, the dinner butter club? No, no it's a little no, too no too big. Dinner yeah. that, that happened. I still like ball boys. I like it. What's better, ball boys or water boys? Ball boys. It is by ball boys. I concur. Both of you think that. See, people thought water boys. 
they were conveying that that's better because it's more complimentary. Like somehow that's a higher calling to be bringing the water than getting the balls. Who's higher up? The water boy or the or the ball, the ball boy? boy? I think the water boy is probably higher up, right? I think people think that just because Adam Sandler made a movie about a water boy. Yeah. And then he became a superstar football player. Okay. I know Jason's a big fan of the Deucers. <laughs> Uh, all right, couple headlines here for you before we get into some news and some more running back rankings. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. FootClanHelp.com. This is our one and only time we'll be calling for some new writers on the website. We don't post the link anywhere. We want people who love the show, so we only mention it here on the show. If you go to FootClanHelp.com, you can apply to write for TheFantasyFootballers.com. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we have a great group of writers right now. Going to add a couple more names to that list. Get the privilege of working with the Borgogin on a regular basis. Privilege slash curse, as I would say. But uh, FootClanHelp.com. That's it. That's all I'm saying, That's Mike. That's it. Not mentioning it anymore. What web address? <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers. Are you doing all right today, Mike? You I doing am. good? You got the Suns cap no, on, the playoffs I'm getting ready to start. I'm sure people want to hear about that. Oh, I can't wait to talk about Sons and Four. Oh no, uh, on this podcast. That was no. so fun last year. I'm I'm doing all right. We're just you know, it was a wild day yesterday as we were trying to get our wits about us of how to ha handle you know Jason making sure he's okay, his family's okay, are the rest of us okay, and so just just still trying to find my bearings. It was like you scattered cockroaches. <laughs> I mean, it, we <laughs> it we, was. We got the test results in from Jason and that everyone. Was, that was the light. Just, that was the light. <laughs> and it's just everybody scrambled into different places. Um, so <laughs> we'll, we'll make it through. Yep. A uh, reminder to check out ultimatedraftkit.com. You want to get the ultimate draft kit now when it's cheaper. Get access to the Dynasty Pass. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. The Cockroaches was actually one of the popular names that was brought up for the three guys, maybe. That's not as flattering. No, no, but a real a real popular entry, okay. from what I understand. All right, we have uh, we got some news, contract news. Oh. Send in the car. Send in the car. Congratulations. Derek Carr, three-year, $121 million extension through 2025. You know me. I'm quick to give Derek Carr credit. You, you are. You are. Uh, you're you're quick to get on and off of that of the that bus. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, that's off but that. but of the of the three of us, you have definitely been the most supportive of Derek Carr, and it's 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 just a, it's a sign of the NFL. Like Derek Carr is a good player. He is not an elite quarterback. I'm sure that he would disagree with that, but the general public at large. Like Carr is just they know he's not an elite quarterback, but he's he's a good player. And when you have a good quarterback and you have a situation where you can win, this is what you gotta do now in the NFL is you you pay them just a crap ton of money and they 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 weren't gonna start over. So Would you rather congratulations, have Mr. Carr? Sorry to interrupt no, you good. there. Would you rather have Derek Carr or Kirk Cousins be your quarterback? Oh, that's interesting. Because I, I have a thought on that, but I, I'm curious your answer. I Derek Carr's younger, I think, right? I mean, Derek don't Carr, even factor that in. Just oh, fact, just factor in like he's a lot younger. He's 31. Yeah, I, I guess I just mean as your quarterback, as your leader. Who do you think's a better combination of the two? I think that like when Cousins is on, he's better, but Carr with a little bit more consistent and there's still it's hard to really shake anything of uh being concerned about like Kirk Cousins and being clutch yeah so I guess I'd go Carr yeah I think he's a better leader even if he's more limited as a quarterback and last year to the playoffs they add Devontae Adams there's some hope there so congrats to Mr. Carr yeah I mean look at that like Carr was able to get an elite wide receiver to come to his team yeah, they would not have Kirk him. Kirk Cousins was able to get an elite wide receiver to want to go play to, for a different team. With Stephon Diggs? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. 
Ipso facto. <laughs> Uh, Travis Etienne says he feels like he's 85 to 90 percent recovered from Liz Frank surgery last August. Some research on Liz Frank injuries. Um, they start fewer games two and three years post surgery compared to those without a history of the injury. Performance is reduced by 21 percent in the first year after surgery. His injury was obviously as early as it could have come last year. Yeah, and James Robinson's recovering from an Achilles injury in the week sixteen in week sixteen of last season. What they're gonna do at the running back room is fascinating. Yeah, I mean they need another body. They yeah. they do. It was very funny to watch the interview with ETN. I don't know if you saw that, Kyle. But the he was just like, you know, if I was gonna miss any year in the NFL, this would be the one to miss. <laughs> Because he missed the whole experiment with, with, uh, with uh, Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer. So it was um, it was a funny watch, but he's getting himself back. He'll be competing in the running back room. Noah Fant's fifth-year option picked up by the Seahawks. Mm. Great. <laughs> so Noah Fant and Will Disley. Yeah. Yep. And then Anthony Ferkser signed oh. by the Falcons. Oh, baby. One-year contract. How's that feel, Kyle? The Ferk, Ferk, the Ferk daddy came home. Ferk daddy fresh. <laughs> Perk Daddy Fresh. Does that really change your outlook for the uh, for the Falcons this season? Are you feeling a little bit better about that receiving core? I don't consider him part of the team. Okay. Oh. Okay. Ferk Daddy not making an impact. Oh. I'm sure you were like – you're still burnt that they missed out on Byron Pringle. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any other news over there? You got anything, Kyle? We're good. Anything exciting? No extension for Kyle. No three-year extension for he's, Kyle. He's one year at a time. Oh, we go year to year yep. for him with the bunions. <laughs> See, don't, I don't no, like that. No, I don't no, like no, that no, one. No, no, no bunions. No. no bunions. All right. Uh, let's talk rankings. Running backs. All right. We just did the top 10 running backs on our consensus early rankings. On Tuesday's show, Mike. Let me ask you a question before we get into 11 through however many we can. Was Did you find it easier than you expected or more difficult to put players in a particular order at this time of year? It's it's far more difficult when you're looking at it, you know, just from a high-level perspective like this where it's not the statistics surprising you from time to time. And it's like the the top is easy. And then just the further you go down, you realize, oh, but I, I think I like this player more than player Y. And then you move it, and then the entire mosaic puzzle just gets screwed up yet again. So when you when you get into this range, it does start to get difficult. So for those that are new to the show or you, or you need a refresher, when we get our UDK rankings out there, those are our full stat projections. We go team by team, player by player, every offensive player in the league – um, we look at last season, we look at the depth chart, this is post draft, and we're we're literally projecting every sting every single statistic for those players, and that determines the rankings. So at that stage, when you hit June, when that releases uh post draft, you're you're getting the byproduct of statistical projections. So we're not sitting there trying to make a player number six or number ten or number twenty four. It's a an outcome of the stats. Mm -hmm. right now we are this is just an initial order and then we're putting our rankings together and seeing what the consensus is but it's fun to talk about these players and see where we're at one through ten was jonathan taylor christian mccaffrey derrick henry austin eckler uh, dalvin cook javante williams alvin Kamara, Najee harris joe mixon i should say the disrespected joe mixon and james connor because nothing i've seen more then you disrespect Joe Mixon by putting him at 11. Oh, this the, 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 the Twitter was upset? Twitter was upset when I posted my first rankings a while back and Mixon wasn't uh, number one or something. And then <laughs> they were mad when, I, when these came out too. Love Joe Mixon. I think we talked about all the reasons why it might not be a top three, four finish. But let's start at maybe the least desirable player, but shouldn't be. In the top 12. I'm Leonard, all about it. Leonard Fournette of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, 
when a player has kind of been put out to pasture, like Leonard Fournette had been, mm-hmm. and then they resurface, it is very strange for the long-term confidence in a player. He's 27 years old. Mike, you have him at 9. Jason has him at 10. I've got him at 13. But from weeks 4 through 15 last year, he was the RB3. He was on pace for 349 opportunities, including a mind-blowing 88 receptions with Tom Brady in Tampa. They brought him back. They liked what they got last year. Running it back. And, like, and Ronald Jones is gone. So not that he was a – clearly was not a huge threat to the workload this past season. But looking at the depth chart now, I mean, you have Keyshawn Vaughn. You have – is is Gio back? Is Giovanni Bernard – He's back. Okay, so Giovanni Bernard – Was but, he ever there, Kyle? Okay, Did you ever confirm that's, that? That's a fair question to start with. But. His mustache was. Okay. All but, right. like, Brady and the Bucks are going to be among the lead uh, – the league leaders in – points and Leonard Fournette is used as a three down running back there's no reason to think he won't be used that way yet again now the red flags for Fournette for me he's he's 27 years old he's had you know he had some heavy usage in Jacksonville so that that's that that's the red flag is does he start to wear down because of the age and all of the use but if he if he holds up the the workload and the scoring opportunity is so outrageous. He was averaging five receptions per game, like that's that's wild stuff. And it's not it's not the first time he's done that. You don't think of Leonard Fournette as a pass catching running back, and yet we've had multiple seasons where he just is an absolute sponge for these targets. I I it's hard to really pick apart Leonard Fournette as a lower end running back one. He really should be safe. Right. That's the truth of Leonard Fournette. He should be really safe from a volume perspective. He has missed three games each of the last two seasons. So speaking to the durability factor, you got a new head coach in Todd Bowles now, but the same offensive system. So range of outcomes for Fournette, I really doubt that he's going to finish outside the top 20. I think that that is a very sure. low probability a situation. I mean, I guess you could say a another – red flag is is the touchdown like while they're going to score a lot and he has chances for uh, receiving touchdowns and things but Tom Brady throws a lot near the goal line so you will lose some opportunities for how great Fournette was it was only the eight rushing touchdowns but that number can easily go up and just have a you know Fournette is one of these players when you're uh, when, when you're planting the flag early on these these early round running backs could could Fournette end the season with fourteen plus touchdowns on the year? Yes, easily and absolutely. Easily. So that, that's one of the the questions and scenarios you need to play out for these guys. And Fournette is can easily hit that number. No, they they like him. He obviously has the trust of of the goat himself. So number twelve after Leonard Fournette, DeAndre Swift, twenty three years old. I have him at eight. Mike, you're at sixteen. Yeah, this he's well, this so is difficult. A, this is a big gap. I mean, that is uh, Jason at eleven. It, is this a is as simple as you're not a Lions fan, right? <laughs> so you don't. The prospect of guaranteed high value touches for DeAndre Swift goes down. Is that in the mix for you at least? Yes, there is that. I mean, he's like we're two years into his career on the field. He is truly in a an elite difference maker of, you know, rookie season, 46 receptions this past year, 62 has only played 13 games each of the, each of his two years. And that like, that's a concern to me for, for Deandre Swift. Not that I, I'm not calling him injury prone, but feeling like you can lock in. Well, this guy just the, the way he, the way he takes damage to his body, he's going to miss a handful of games. But the the receptions are just so outrageous. Where paint the the picture for DeAndre Swift of can he easily hit the fourteen touchdown mark? It's not easy. Can he? Yes. But it is it as easy as someone like Leonard Fournette? No, not to me. But he covers that like he musks up with <laughs> uh, with the receptions of seventy eight targets this past year in thirteen games. Uh, that that's an outrageous number of over the last decade. 
running backs with 100 plus receptions and 15 total touchdowns or 15 plus touchdowns in their first two years. The list is out, is heavy hitters. It's Saquon, McCaffrey, Kamara, David Johnson, Devontae Freeman, Le'Veon Bell, and now DeAndre Swift. So I I am certainly on the other the probably the wrong side of the bet. But I just I like the other running backs more than DeAndre Swift. From weeks uh, from one through eleven, he was the RB seven. I do think that the the kind of ideal season for him it does mimic the McCaffrey twenty eighteen season, where he scores seven times on the ground, six times through the air. So you combine for double digit touchdowns. But it's it's those reception totals and staying healthy. I mean, you give him another four games last year and you're going to be what in the 80 reception range I mean that is an insane number for a running back yeah so there's no reason in my opinion there's the odds of him coming out he has the capability of giving you an Eckler season he has the capability of giving you that CMC season from 2018 is it probable on the Lions probably not yeah probably not and you still have you have Jamal Williams who He's still around too. It, it, like he, his snap totals always look low, but then you'll see the opportunity share, and it's. I mean, he he's getting ten plus opportunities every week. So Who's you, more likely to be top five, DeAndre Swift or Leonard Fournette? Leonard Fournette. See, I think it's Swift. Yeah, betting yeah. on the young guy. I You're get betting it. on the touchdowns. I'm betting on the youth. Mm-hmm. Thirteen is Aaron Jones. I already teased this earlier. He's going to be one of the most. Polarizing players this offseason. He was on the field for 15 games, 171 carries, 52 receptions. Finishes the RB12 last year. We have him at 13. You and Jason have him at 13. I have him at 12. They lose Devontae Adams and uh, his 4,000 targets. Right. And so naturally. Which is, that's a little, that's low. Sorry, I didn't mean I please I didn't want to be hyperbolic. Yeah, but you're winning hyperbolic in the wrong direction. Right. But Aaron Jones has this history for fantasy football where even if it's not been steady, three straight years as an RB one, right? Mm-hmm. So that that means our early rankings already have him outside of his, his last three seasons. He was the number two overall running back in twenty nineteen, number five in twenty twenty, dropped to twelve last year. But a lot of that is just rushing touchdowns went way down. Um, but do they stay there with A.J. Dillon's involvement in the offense, and does he do enough in the passing game to propel him up into the top 12? And that's kind of the debate. Yeah, that's the the big question. The big question is the receiving. For the past three years, Devontae Adams, when he's on the field, he is seeing a 30-plus percent target share, which is – that's outrageous. And – uh, I mean, Kyle, we, I can throw to you as well, but we have, when researching, you know, vacated targets. That's something that you often look for. You're like, okay, player X has gone from this team. Now who's going to fill in the target vacuum? And quite frequently, we see that vacuum actually is filled with extra targets to the running back. No one on this team can replace Devontae Adams. No one in the draft can replace Devontae Adams, even if they bring in a really high-profile rookie in the first round. They're not the, getting that What's that rookie going to see? 20? 18%. Yeah, percent of the targets? Like, that's where Aaron Jones can become an absolute draft day value is if he is the player who, who fills the target vacuum void. Now, it could be split with both running backs. A.J. Dillon does it like just like Leonard Fournette. You don't you don't think of him as a pass catching running back, but he was actually really, really solid in the work that he was given. Uh, you know, I, I'll try and pull up the targets, but the difference between targets and receptions, he was catching everything, and then he was making things happen, like really big plays. And AJ Dillon just keeps increasing the work. I think that's the that's the biggest concern for people out there is that the, the timeshare is shrinking, or I should say, uh, you know. AJ Dillon's role in the time in the timeshare is increasing. Increasing, yeah. Now, so the the targets. <laughs> sorry, I'm so one guy's is shrinking, the <laughs> other guy's is getting bigger. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Do I got you? <laughs> that sounded real weird. Uh, but 
But yeah, so one guy's streaking, one guy's getting bigger. Thirty-seven targets, thirty-four receptions. Like that's a really high catch percentage for a guy that is not thought of as a pass catching specialist. There are there are quarterbacks like Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers who trust goes a long way on what kind of target volume you're going to get. There's a reason why in the playoffs we made fun of the box score in the playoff game against San Francisco. Everything went to Devontae Adams and who else? Aaron Jones. Those were the two players that dominated the entire target share on that team. To me, this would be like the New England Patriots with James White and Tom Brady, and they lose Devontae Adams off that roster. James White's going to get those numbers and that trust. Right. It's going to rise and that, because a rookie can't step in and earn that trust overnight. And like you said, maybe they get 18%. So I think Aaron Jones actually has the potential to vault up into a safer running back than we think he is because he's been ping-ponging between, you know, high bust rate, right? 31% of the time in 2019, then he was steady, no busts in 2020, 27% last year. Is it an accomplishment to finish at RB12 with only 171 carries? I think it is. Mm -hmm. So you're not counting on him to take a bunch of the rushing work away from A.J. Dillon. You're counting on him being part of the – fix part of the Devonte Adams replacement project and it was his, the lowest rushing touchdown total since his rookie season I I think I, I don't know if I stand alone on that but I think Aaron Jones could be a real steal in fantasy drafts because I don't think anybody wants to take him over some of the more attractive players out there yeah the younger players I agree um his current best ball ADP is the RB 15 so uh, that speaks to that fact it's the fourth round pick. That's wild. There's a ho hum factor. You know how you kind of felt about Dalvin Cook. Mm -hmm. I think that's how people are feeling about Aaron Jones. They've been there. They've done that. They want to try something new. All right. We'll try discussing Nick Chubb momentarily after a quick break. All right, Nick Chubb at 14. He made me sad last year. I, yeah. really, I, I really thought he could have just an absolute monster season. I mean, he missed three games uh, for, uh, from injury, but to come through with only eight rushing touchdowns, it, it, it felt like a season that Nick Chubb should have just truly dominated that statistic. Finished at RB11. One of the players that can dominate in the NFL and yet not dominate for fantasy, right? You can put up 1,200-plus rushing yards, eight touchdowns, but isn't involved in the passing game, won't be. Kareem Hunt has a role carved out there. He's a tackle breaker. He's one of the best pure runners in the league. But I think you're going to have fatigue here too. Sure. And he's, I think it, it's not just fatigue. It's like... He's good, not great for fantasy. In the, his sophomore season, he he was the running back seven, uh, but again, the, only eight rushing touchdowns. You know, it's he's had eight rushing touchdowns in three out of his four years. Had the twelve rushing touchdowns two years ago, where he, like he seemed like he was on his way, uh, but then only played the, in the twelve games, and. Now with him, like Kareem Hunt is the pass catcher, and you know Dearness Johnson, they're going to bring. It seems like they're going to bring him back. You have Deshaun Watson coming in as the franchise quarterback, and in three full years as a starter in Houston, Deshaun Watson threw to the running back position under fifteen percent of the time, which was dead last in the NFL for those three years. Like that's a big concern. And we know why. Watson's a scrambler. He's always looking to take the shot down the field. He doesn't want to check it down. And if he's, he'd rather run if he's not going to, he'd rather run instead of checking it down. So there's just, there's a lot of issues here for Nick Chubb with the platoon, with no targets. They should score a lot more with Deshaun Watson. But then again, is why, what's the suspension situation for Deshaun Watson? There's, there's a lot of variables and unknowns here for Nick Chubb. Well, and you you would anticipate with a $230 million guaranteed investment right. that you might let that player throw more than the Baker Mayfield experience and that type of system. 
the uh, that's part of it, right? I I think that if you had dropped Derrick Henry onto the Cleveland Browns last year with Baker Mayfield in their offense, he would have produced a 228 for 1259 and 8 number. Yeah. I think Nick Chubb has been hurt by not being able to function in an in a real play action pass offense where the there's a real threat to drive the ball down the field because Baker didn't represent that. So in a perfect world, the best case scenario for Nick Chubb is Deshaun Watson plays the majority of the year and you've got a 15 touchdown season on the ground. That's mm -hmm. not impossible. You know, is Nick Chubb better than James Conner? As a player? As, as a player. Yes. Yeah, tremendously, right? Yes. James Conner was what, the RB3? Is that number right? RB5. RB5. Oh, you idiots. I know. That's my point, though. You turn the – if the Cleveland Browns offense becomes effective to the degree of the Arizona Cardinals, which is not a far cry for Deshaun Watson to be able to take it, you're going to need those touchdowns. But they could come. Mm -hmm. But they're not going to come in the passing game. They never have. They never will. Antonio Gibson, <sighs> commander's running back. Now, Mike, we are turning the page. This is a conversation about the next season of fantasy football. Yep. Now, historically, Antonio Gibson has been your champion. Now, yes. everybody knows the champion rules. You must renew your contract once per season with a champion. So they don't stay your champion for life. They must be renewed. So I am coming to you now on this show. I don't like this. To ask you whether or not he is still your champion. Well... He'll always be the champion of my heart. That's a that is the lifetime contract that has been that signed. That sounds like the kind of conversation <laughs> you have with an employee you're about to let go. You'll uh, always be hired in my heart. I just need to have a new champion. That, that's all. Uh, is this a is this a retirement? No, it is. It's certainly not a retirement. It's Antonio Gibson is a great player. My thoughts on Carson Wentz are <laughs> well documented over the course of this podcast. Carson Wentz, like Deshaun Watson, doesn't throw to the running back position a lot. Uh, J.D. McKissick yeah, smooches his back with a vengeance. I'm waiting. Oh, wait, you you want me? I was. No, I don't want it to happen, but I know it's going to happen. You're taking the fun out of me interrupting you, though. Oh. Fun for who? Perfection. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Antonio Gibson, you know, over the first half of the season, he was okay. It was, uh, I, you'd call Wor it worse than okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. He's slightly disappointed. Uh, where, you know, over weeks one through eight, running back 19 in total points. That's not great. That's not getting it done. And then McKissick goes down. He starts getting a whole bunch of targets, which – to be fair to Antonio Gibson, he was he was getting more targets uh, than in the in the first half of the season than he was the previous year. But when you for that brief window of time that JD McKissick was a Buffalo Bill, it felt like all of the uh, hullabaloo, all of and, and not driven just by fantasy analysts, all of, like the coaching staff of of the Manders kept talking about. Well, yeah, we could see Antonio Gibson being a Christian McCaffrey type of player. See, that's the problem. Yeah. Can't we just accept a different type of ceiling for Antonio Gibson? Yes. Do we have, that's the key to this because he finished as the RB10 despite the ups and downs last year, despite J.D. McKissick, despite nobody at quarterback. Finished as RB10. Can we just accept that? I think everybody wanted to believe that Antonio Gibson had perennial top three ability. Yes, we did. So why not just move him down a, a peg and just accept that he's more, I don't know, Josh Jacobs ceiling sure. yeah. than somebody else. And that's where we have him. I mean, we have him at running back 15. Oh, that's got to hurt. It does. And the dude has finished at running back 12 or running back 10. Yeah. He's, he's been incredible when the opportunity presents itself. You also have some offensive line changes uh, shuffling, and that's – not necessarily a great thing. So Antonio Gibson still solid, but seeing the ceiling that we have, we that I have hoped for for the past two years, I don't 
it's not happening at least this year. I do have the official champion test with me. Do you want me to run through? It's only a single question okay, it, can, on the test to I determine whether or not he's still your champion. Okay. Would you play me or Leonard Fournette? Yeah, that's the question. That's the only question on the test. That's gross. So if you answer <laughs> Leonard Fournette, they unfortunately <laughs> are removed as your official champion. Um, okay, but what, so let's move on to David Montgomery. <laughs> <laughs> okay. David Montgomery of the Chicago Bears, just under 25 years old, missed a bunch of games last year, still ended up with 51 targets, 42 receptions. Um, now, this one is extremely interesting to me because uh, you and Jason have, in these early rankings, you have David Montgomery up at 15. I'm down at 21. I am going to – he'll be sliding down okay. to your, your uh, range soon enough. I say you – the way that you – your your inkling of the way that the things are going for the Chicago Bears. It's the it's the James it's the James Robinson universe though. Okay. For David Montgomery. He is literally their best player on both sides of the ball, I think. He's, I think that's not a even a debate. He's, I think he's their best player. He so by way of no other choice, like you're not getting anywhere with the Pringle Mooney offense, I'm afraid to say. <laughs> So I think by sheer volume, right, even after he came back from injury last year, they literally said, well, we have no choice but to use you 86% of the time with the running back rush attempts. This was coming back after a run for uh, his backup, whose name's escaping me what, right now. Khalil Herbert? Khalil Herbert, right, who had a nice run during the season. So uh, when you talk about talent, he's the most talented player, and that's why I think he could still – happily end up in that range. I think on pure talent, he's a very good player. He can catch the football, saw 74% of the running back targets. But I do think the Bears suck and are going to be really, really bad. Yeah. And I am really sorry because I know Bears fans will not like hearing They're that. They're working on something. <gasps> They're, <laughs> their work, you might be murdered by the end of the show. They're working on something for future seasons. Yes. And unfortunately, I think it might it might take Justin Fields down with it because this is something that happens, right? If you're rebuilding for two years and, and he's your tribute, like he might not be their future. So that is not who we're talking about, though. You've got a new head coach. You've got a team that has jettisoned away a lot of talent. And so they could surprise me. I think their win total is, is six and a half, Kyle? It's seven, but it's seven. been bet down. It's been bed down, yeah. So, I don't know, Mike. Does David Montgomery, what's his highest possible finish in your mind? The highest possible finish for Montgomery would be that running back 12 area. And the questions of the new coaching staff, like Montgomery, you know, Matt Nagy seemed to love David Montgomery. True. This new coaching staff was – do they share that affection for David Montgomery? Do they no choice? Do they, well no like Khalil Herbert is he like, could it's have some of the load you're saying yeah, more that, of a committee it, that that's the the thing to watch is Khalil Herbert had a, just a handful of games but I believe one was against the Buccaneers uh, last year who were an elite run stopping defense that like when you saw the Buccaneers matched up against your fantasy running back you grimaced because you knew that that player was not going to give you a high-end performance that week unless your name was Khalil Herbert. So I, I I think that Herbert could be worked in a little bit more, and that's that along with the offense is why I've got Montgomery down at a lower-end RB2. Scoring opportunities could be very low. New offensive coordinator Luke, Luke Gexi calling plays for the first time. Zeke comes in at 17th. Now you y'all wild out here with Zeke. Mike has him at eleven. Thank you. Jason and I do not. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I need more information, Mike. I need to see what this off season looks like. I I don't know why he ended up here. That's what I was saying about the mosaic puzzle. Is right. you just you start trying to move guys up, but the natural consequence is other guys just get moved down. For me. Why I am bullish. Well, yeah, like forgiving of. It's a better word. Forgiving Zeke for this last year, which honestly was not that bad of a, of a year for fantasy football. What was his fantasy finish this past year? 
Well, let me pull Despite up. Despite all of the, uh, he finished at running back six. All the arrows so, thrown at him throughout so, the whole season. So the guy finished at RB six, and the fantasy community is like, "Yeah, we're done here He's with this." He's dead. And that the, would make six consecutive top twelve years. By the way, a thing to look at that has already occurred for the off season is Amari Cooper had to be traded because of the contract of Ezekiel Elliott. This thing is an absolute, complete albatross. It was terrible at the time. It's still terrible now. Why do they but call them that? An albatross? I believe it's because I they're... I mean, that's a big bird. Yeah, I think they cannot really fly well. Oh, because really? Because they're too big and bloated. Do they... Do you have get any... The, get the team on it. Do you have any knowledge over there, Borgogan? It's a golf term, I know. It is? It, it's got to be based on the bird, though. It is. I'll, I'll get yeah, on Yeah, get, get on that. Uh, but here's what go. they also use that exact phrase in golf. I don't have an answer to your question. So like I was saying about Tampa Bay week one, Zeke terrible against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but then rattled off RB eight, one, six, six. And it came out after the season. What happened in week four, a partial tear of his PCL. So he was able to play through the rest of the season because the doctors told so him. So you believe it. The doctor said, it's not going to get worse. You can play. And those first five games, he looked great. And then you could tell that things just weren't the same for him. You, you Through the first six weeks, averaging nearly 87 rushing yards. That plummeted to 43 for the rest of the season. He was – it. You could see it on the field. You could see it in the numbers. And I believe that he is closer to the beginning of, of the season than he was to the second see, half. And I, I understand, and that will 100% be the reason why people buy in. By the way, the word albatross is used metaphorically to mean a burden that feels like a curse. And it comes from a 1798 poem by a good friend of the show, Samuel Taylor Coleridge. The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Oh. So a burden that feels like a curse is definitely a good way to describe the contract situation. Okay, but that still does not answer the bird question. It, I need someone to read the poem. Well, I mean, the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, you have to anticipate that... Is the albatross the mariner? No, the albatross is, is causing issues because <laughs> they have big wingspans, <laughs> right? All right, listen. Here's the problem I have with that argument for Ezekiel Elliott. Okay. You're a year last old. Year, last you're, year's running back six. You're a year older, Zeke. Uh huh. You you didn't look good. I like the excuse. I like the reasoning, but you've had your yards per carry diminish from your peak years, and you're you're gonna have you've have a ton of volume on your body, right? You've you've carried the ball more than anybody else in football over the last three years. So, I know you're not at the Derrick Henry level of injury. But when you have a PCL injury after years and years of, of a heavy workload, you have a very capable committee back in Tony Pollard. It's got to be a confidence of what ceiling you can hit for Zeke. So, yeah, I mean, one of the reasons he finished at six was because he played every game. Sure. So, um, you know, 13.4 points per game last season. He wasn't winning you any weeks. At the uh, beginning, he was. He had, a, he, had a, he had a running back one finish in week three. Yeah, a one in running number one overall. I would say it, it's, six and six on it, the week helps you win a week as well. But, but it's funny, right? You finished at six, but you only ever finished in the, inside the, uh, above that number one time. Yeah. I mean, so it, that's a, that's right. a he, he's a steady guy. He, did, he played the whole season, that, so that always helps your end of your finish. Up till the bye week... He was running for over five yards a carry. I mean, I I no, really I, I know. believe yeah, it was the you PCL. You do believe it, yeah. And I talked, uh, I was talking with Betsy, the our injury guy, and he said he that should be completely healed up by the time the season starts. So that particular injury shouldn't be a concern. Now, if he starts running poorly again, will that mean that it's not completely healed up, or he's just old? <laughs> Cam Akers at eighteen, Josh Jacobs at nineteen. Elijah Mitchell at Elijah. 20. Any thoughts on these three? Akers yes. is, to me, the most singularly terrifying player in the top 25 at running back. That's where I was going to start is I have no idea what to do with Cam Akers because it was a miracle of modern medicine that Cam Akers was able to return 
in such a quick time frame from his Achilles injury, but he, his numbers are so bad. Of uh, in the time he returned, yes, in the time he returned, that wasn't stopping. Two point five yards per carry. Oh gosh, it's so bad. That was not stopping Coach McVay from giving him the ball a whole bunch. And he'll be he'll have even more time for the recovery. And I and they're just, I, and they're I, an incredible I, offense, and they'll be great. Yes, but will he be the? I, I guy? don't know. I I he think should it, be. I think he will be the guy, and we're probably too low on him right now. But it's such a scary draft proposition to put. Where Kyle, give me his ADP where he's going in best ball right now. RB fourteen three oh nine. <sighs> like, is that ahead of Aaron Jones? Because that's ahead of Aaron Jones, right? Yeah, and Zeke. Zeke is late fourth. Yeah, yeah. so I'll take both of them over Acres. It's just a terrifying. It's terrifying because what you saw last year, like you can't really hold it against him if he's just, you know, he didn't have an off season to train. He was just rehabbing. He didn't have time with the offense. He just got thrust back into it, and Sean McVay was willing to say, "Ah, you got it all." He's young. He was drafted high. Yeah, was he twenty two? Yeah, and he'll be he'll be twenty three pretty soon. I loved him coming into the league. Too. We all did. That's why this this conversation is so bizarre. Of like, I don't really know which which side of the argument I'm going to plant the flag and choose to believe about Cam Akers because watching him when he came back, he was atrocious. <laughs> to me, like my my eyeball test and not a official NFL scout, I thought he looked real bad. Agreed. He also, to me, looked under uh, undersized. Well, he's yeah, he's a smaller guy. Um, only one player in the last three years has more rushing attempts in the red zone than Dalvin Cook. Or I'm sorry, only one has. Uh, it comes in second to Dalvin Cook here. Dalvin Cook has the most. Josh Jacobs is second. Oh man. Josh Jacobs had nine touchdowns, 54 receptions, finished his RB14. I've got Josh Jacobs fever, man. Do you really? Yes, I do. And yeah, oh, I don't I know. Take it. Take it and I, run. I don't I've know had how to that feel for too many it. years. I'm out on that. I, that's that's what's so funny about it is uh, I've got Josh Jacobs fever, he I, says. I was so out on Josh Jacobs last year. He's is this so, Josh McDaniels related? It's McDaniel's related. It's he was the running back fourteen with sixty four targets. We finally saw him getting targets. You're bringing in a true elite wide receiver to make this team so much better. And I just I like Josh Jacobs is the dude, and he keeps well they, doing what like running back eighteen, running back eight, running back fourteen. Yeah, it's. I'm not going to bet against him this year, and I think that the Raiders are vastly improved. And I want running backs from teams that are improved, and the market does not reflect that improvement. Where right now he's going as the running back 21 in the fifth round. He is he is another example of the Gibson situation, where when he came into the league, aspirationally top five, yeah, yes, and because he didn't deliver on that kind of potential, there's a fatigue there. Where Jacobs is a very, very solid RB2, RB1 upside week to week. Um, you know, did he win you a lot of weeks? No, but as a, as an RB2, he was very, very solid. Yes. And so, um, and then Josh McDaniels should mean good things for the offense. Elijah Mitchell, another player with, you know, he finished at RB25 last year, missed a bunch of games, but was outstanding. He's the only rookie running back with more than five 100 plus yard performances in the first 11 games played. That's okay. Kind that's, of crazy. Yeah, that's only AP has more than that, but since then it's been Eli Mitchell and nobody else. Okay. Eli and Adrian. Eli Mitchell is like this is just a a a pin in the cardboard or uh cardboard's not the <laughs> 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 A pin in the bonnet, uh, a bee in the bonnet. Uh, no, no, no. It's it's a. Uh, we're we're gonna move no, on. No, from no, the no, no. I got in the cap. A feather in the cap. No. <laughs> a, pin, a pin on the map. A bird in the hand. No. 
that I was so far off on the right word okay. that, that your your metaphors right now are not, not, not even close. close. So, like, if you were Was gonna, this a good thing for him? Was the pen a good thing? Yeah. We're, we're, <laughs> this pen is... Dude, I, bu- 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 I can't even... This this is a this is a placeholder for Elijah Mitchell that I have to see what happens in the NFL draft. <laughs> You're not even going to attempt a new analogy. No, 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 no. Okay, because my brain is completely stuck trying to find the word while I'm talking. No, this is it's not going well. Here's here's the reality for the 49ers. I believe this is the sixth consecutive year they've had a different leading fantasy running back. So it's either the fifth or sixth straight year where that's happened. So we've gone through it all. We've gone through the um, the, the Raheem Mostert year. Now Elijah Mitchell's there. Everything you saw on the field was elite, right? You didn't think he was going to be the guy. Trey Sermon was drafted higher. He was the guy. He's 24 years old. He's very fast. But he went out multiple times to injury over the course of the year. This team has never rested on you know, one back. They've always gone out and made it annoying. They've always gone out and added... It's having Coleman to to the offense to mix with Jarek McKinnon back in. You're like, why can't you just give me one back in the Shanahan system? And that's because they know that they'll break three or four of them because they all get hurt. Oh, my gosh. You figured it out. Cork board. A pin in the cork board? Yeah. I'm like, I'm just holding the note up. You're holding a note up for you. Yeah. Eli. Yeah. See how it makes more sense now? <laughs> it makes more sense, but it's not really the best, like, most profound <laughs> it's a cork board right i mean it's a cork Look, board come on cardboard cork board oh that's what you because you said cardboard yes a pin in the cork board yes and it, and it threw everything off Boo, yes it did all right eli mitchell the the strange thing is is he doesn't belong at 20 the old cork board <laughs> is that his nickname <laughs> he doesn't belong at 20 he's ranked at 20 if they don't add more people in the draft, and it's his job. We'll all have him ranked higher, right? Yes. Uh, so that's what it comes up, it comes down to. Can his body hold up? Do you get a carousel of running backs? He can be a top fifteen back if if the existing depth chart stays the same. Can, fair, fair. Yeah, but I mean, can he actually stay healthy? Yeah, I don't know. At twenty four, the answer was no. Or at twenty three, the answer was no. J.K. Dobbins, Saquon Barkley, Clyde edwards alaire Damian Harris, Rashad Penny. That's 21 through 25. 26, ETN. 27, Dylan. 28, Kareem Hunt. 29, Cordero Patterson. The Rebirth Project. And then number 30, Devin Singletary. Yeah. Do you have a favorite of that uh, bunch? Yeah, uh, the the one I wanted to, to focus on a little bit more would be Rashad Penny. Agreed. Where... I mean, league it turned out to be a league-winning player if you had scooped him up at the right time off of the waiver wire of week 14, the running back 3, has a down week, but then the running back 9, 1, and 2 if you happen to be playing in week 18. And meanwhile, like, the news... Like Chris Carson is back, as, but is he really back? I mean, that, that injury he had was incredibly serious. I haven't seen that he's actually healthy and ready to go, and, like, I barely factor him into this can he, equation. Can he get hit? Yeah. I, it, it reminds me a little. His finish to the year, remember the uh, Montgomery end of season two years ago? Yes. Where it was like elite game after elite game, yeah. and he was like, okay, how much do we make this a prescription right. for the future? Penny's even more difficult because you don't have a history, right? You had seen some some performances from Montgomery before his elite run. Penny's not going to catch the football. He caught six passes. He doesn't. He's not going to have the... He doesn't have rust with the offense. Yeah, the level of opportunities around the goal line. And that's why he's sitting here at 25. All the risk is baked into that 25 ranking. So, Mike, you do him up at 22. So, there's hope. And he showed he could win weeks. It's just such a small sample. Yeah. but And they're, they're going to be yeah. bad. Yeah, they will... <sighs> Where do you have yeah. him relative... So, him and... This is perfect. You have him and David Montgomery back-to-back. Yeah, yeah. You have Montgomery one spot higher, but both of them have a lot of question marks on the offense. Right now you have Montgomery. You would take him over Penny. Yeah, slightly. But I guess if your team was made up of maybe a more solid group, you might take the shot on Penny over Montgomery. Yeah, that's fair. It's just feel more comfortable with David Montgomery at the top of, of the depth chart for Chicago than you do for with Penny currently. I have a question for Kyle. Is that permitted? Yep. Okay. 
Kyle, is there uh, is there a player on this top uh, on the show today that you take issue with that you find it's ra- the ranking to be egregious uh, on your own personal running back convictions? I think Saquon is just buried, and <laughs> there is upside still. Yeah, yeah, there definitely is. I think a lot of people don't know what to do with Saquon Barkley because what's his best ball ADP right now? Uh, RB eighteen. Oh, Still only 25 years old. I've got him at 18, so I, I'm cool with that. Uh, man, the the Giants are just such a mess, and that is muddying everything. Is Daniel Jones going to be the quarterback for the whole year? Yes, he will. You know that they have the most expensive receiving room in the entire league? Hmm, okay. Do you know that they have the least amount of receiving touchdowns in the entire <laughs> league? Is, Shout out to Warren Sharp for look, tweeting that out. Is, I mean, that's just... It was a bad year for Kenny Galladay. Yeah, but a bad year is just... That's just called a giant season recently. Yeah. So I think the pathway for Saquon, yeah, when you have a player that has set a precedent of being elite before, which he has been, mm-hmm. you've always got that chance. So I don't know if he's going to stay here or not. I need to see a little bit more. Mike, you're more generous with him at 18. Because I'm with Kyle. Of the The upside is... Still, it's tremendous. It's still there to me. Yeah, that's fair. All and, right, and, and the better running back is no longer on the team, so that would be Devontae Booker. <laughs> <laughs> you need to lower him in your rankings, then. <laughs> All right, that is going to do it for today's show. We'll be back with a new episode next week. Also, a bonus episode for those of you supporting the show at jointhefoot.com. We'll be here with the Footcast this afternoon. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.